Howdy howdy, this is Mr. Potter. What we're going to do in today's video is talk about how to use the stacks that we developed in our previous lesson to make a calculator. And I want to bring this up because the first calculators that came out ended up using stacks. And I've got a picture here. This here is the uh, the HP 35 calculator which came out in 1972 and it was one of the first calculators that used not only uh, stacks for representing uh, data and operators in its memory but it also used a stack as a way for the user to enter data. So the idea behind the stacks that we're going to be talking about in here is we're going to be talking about one stack which is going to keep track of operators and one stack which is going to keep track of numbers. And we're going to be using ints uh, just to keep things simple. But the idea is that I would have an expression like 3 plus 2, I would put the number on here, I would put the operator on the stack, and then the number here. And then if I wanted to calculate this, what I would do is I would pop, pop, and pop, and use either a case or if statements to make this a 3 plus 2. And of course the idea of popping is going to get this stuff off the stack for us so that what happens is when I evaluate this to 5 then I end up pushing this on the stack. Now the idea is that we would have multiple operations on this stack and we would have to evaluate these operations as we go through the stack. So I do want to kind of illustrate what's going on here. So let's say I have 3 plus 4 plus 5 and I have my operator stack and I have my number stack. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to see a 3 and I notice that there's nothing on the stack. There's nothing I can do with this 3 so I'm going to put a 3 on here. And then I see a plus and so I'm going to put that operator on the stack. And then I'm going to see a 4. Now I'm going to put the 4 on the stack because I can't say that I'm going to perform this operation that I've got set up here yet. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do that operation until I take a look at the next operator, which my next operator is a plus. Now the thing is, plus is the same precedence as what we've got here, so we're, we are going to evaluate this. So I'm when I see this plus, I know plus has the same precedence as this operator, which means I need to resolve this before I go on. So I'm going to go ahead and say 3 plus 4 by popping my two numbers and by popping my operation. I know that 3 plus 4 is 7, and so a 7 is going to be pushed on the stack, and now I can process this plus. And then I push the 5 on the stack, and as soon as I realize that this is empty, I know that I need to actually process this stack, so I need to take care of this 5 plus 7. So I'm going to again pop pop, and pop the operator as well, and 7 plus 5 is going to give me 12. So then I'll push a 12 on here. And as soon as this stack is empty and this stack is empty, then I know whatever is on the top of this stack has got to be my answer. And so my answer is going to be 12 and we're going to see out that 12. Now this is what happens when I'm dealing with all addition. When I'm dealing with something a little bit more complicated like 3 plus 4 times 5, we're going to do that same idea. I'm going to have my op stack and I'm going to have my num stack. And so I'm going to push the 3 push the plus, push the 4, and I see this times. And times has a higher precedence than plus. So I'm not going to evaluate this because I really want to take care of this calculation first before I do this addition. So I'm actually going to push multiplication on, push the 5 on, and then I reach this point. And now because I've reached the end of this string, I'm ready to process the stack. And the first calculation I process is this 5 times 4. So I'm going to pop, pop, and pop. So I'm going to pop the operator and the numbers here. And then that's going to give me 20. And I'm going to push this on the stack. And I'm going to keep doing this because I'm at the end until this stack is empty. But it's not empty. I have this plus here. So I'm going to do 20 plus 3. And so I'm going to pop, pop, and 20 plus 3 is 23, so we push. So we have a 23 on the stack. And notice at this point, my operator stack is empty. So we're going to see out whatever num.pop gives us. 
So we've got this idea of logic, but we also need to take care of this precedence here. So I want to take care of two more examples here. Here I've got 3 times 4 plus 5. So again, I've got an operator stack and I've got a number stack. I push 3 times 4 and then I hit this plus and I'm not going to push plus onto this op stack because multiplication has a higher precedence. And notice that basically whenever I hit a, an addition, I have to take care of whatever this previous operation is no matter what. So addition is going to have this thing that it's always going to process the previous operation. Multiplication doesn't have that. It's only going to process it if it has the same priority, which we're going to talk about in our next example. So we do 3 plus 4, or excuse me, 3 times 4, and 3 times 4 is 12. So we pop, we pop, we pop, and we push 12 on here because 3 times 4 is 12. And now we're ready to deal with this plus and this 5 and we reach the end of our string. So now we have this operation to process. So we're going to pop, pop, and push. So 12 plus 5 is 17. We push. We're still at the end, and we notice now our operator stuff is empty. And so we're going to see out a 17. So last example I want to talk about is a situation like this, where I have 3 times 4 times 5. So again, we're going to have our operator and our number stack. We're going to push the 3, push the asterisk, push the 4, and we reach this asterisk, and we notice that it has the same priority as this asterisk. So we need to process 3 times 4 first. So we're going to pop, pop, and pop. 3 times 4 is 12, and a 12 gets pushed on the num stack. Then we take care of this asterisk. So we have times, we have 5, and now we're at this end of our string. So because we're at the end of our string, we check operator and it's not empty. So we process 12 times 5. We pop, pop, and pop. So we're going to pop these off. And when we do, uh, 12 times 5 is 60, and we push a 60 onto the stack, and so we see out a 60. So this is what we need to do to process these. And I've kind of gone through some of the examples, but you're actually going to have to flesh these out on your own. So what I want to do is I want to go to our interface. So what I've got here um, is the stacks that we had been working on before. And I want to set this up with a new program. So we're going to do a new file. And we're going to call this uh, calculator calculator.cpp and so now what we're going to do is process our calculator so this is going to be our main driver program so we are going to include our stack.h that we had and we're also going to include io stream because we're going to want to print out stuff, and our usual using namespace standard. Now, for this, we're going to have several methods in here, but all of these methods are going to be referring to the two stacks we have. So these two stacks are actually going to be what we would call global variables. So we're going to go ahead and say stack of type char called op, and a stack of type int which is going to be num. And then I'm also going to have an input string. So string input. And this is where the user is going to be typing in the calculator problem that they want us to solve. And I'm going to have to keep track of a couple of things. I'm probably going to have to keep track of the last operator. And I'm going to have to keep track of the last num. In other words, the last things that were pushed onto the operator stack because we're going to have to determine the precedence of which one uh, has the higher priority. So I'm going to set up um, one thing that we're going to do. Let's go ahead and talk about how we're going to input the string. So we're going to do void input string. And we're going to do this to have a, uh, it's just going to input this from the command line. So the first thing that I'm going to do 
is get the input string from the user. So there's a method called getLine. And what this does, this allows us to use a stream input such as CN and take the result from that and puts the entire line in input. And this means we don't have to worry about parsing white space right now. We can take care of that later. So the whole purpose of this is just to kind of get that input string. And let's go ahead and just test this to make sure this works. Oops, I missed. So C out input. So we'll just test to see if this works. Let's do our int main. And we're going to do input string and then return zero. So I'm going to save this. We're going to compile this. And we're going to be able to say this is an input string. And notice that it prints it off, white space and all. So all of the stuff that we type in for this entire line is put in one line of our input variable. So we've got that ready. Um, so this is one method that we're going to have to deal with. Another thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to know if something is a digit or not. So I'm going to create a method called bool is digit. And it's going to be given a char C. And I want to know if this particular character is a digit. What happens is, remember that a digit lies between 48 and 57 inclusive in Unicode. Uh, remember that our 48 is the char 0 and our 57 uh, keep hitting that our 57 is our char 9 so all I need to do is just return something that will give me true if it's in that range and false otherwise so we'll just return uh, C is greater than or equal to 48 and C is less than or equal to 57 just a real simple uh, statement that's just going to take care of this for us. Um, and the reason I need this is because I need to be able to handle a number. So I'm going to create a void method called handle number, which is going to have our uh, input string, but it's also going to have the position that we are looking at currently, because we're going to parse this string. And I don't want to just get one value off and put it on num. I want to get an entire integer out of it. So I'm going to keep track of an index, uh, which we'll have as a value, I mean a reference parameter, which we'll call i. So what we're going to do is start off by setting our value to be 0. And then while uh, is digit the character that we're looking at, which is going to be input sub i. And as long as that is true, we're going to do the following things. We're going to say val is going to be multiplied by 10. Val is going to get, uh, actually we're going to add to val what we get by casting as an int, input sub i minus 48. And I'll explain what this does in just a moment. And then i plus plus. So what's going to happen is if I were to have a number like 578, let's say I'm doing 578 in my calculation, the first thing that's going to happen is value is 0. And then I'm going to multiply it by 10. So now value is 0. And then I'm going to add the char 5. But remember that 0 is 48, 1 is 49, 2 is 50, and so forth. So then value is going to get and then I move to the next character so now it's 7 but the next thing I'm going to do here 7 is a digit so we're going to multiply by 10 so now value is 50 and then we add the 7 to it so it's 57 and then I++ plus plus. now we're looking at the next digit which is the 8 so we multiply by 10 value is 570 we add the 8 so value gets 578 and then this is going to need to be pushed onto the stack. So we're going to say num.push value. And so this is going to push value, which is an integer, on top of our number stack, which is a stack of integers, which we set up here. 
And so this is going to allow us to handle a number. I'm going to get rid of these comments here because they're not essential to the code. We just wanted to see how this worked. So what this is going to do is that if I need to handle a number, it's going to start at the beginning of a number and work its way through parsing it, getting a value out of it. And of course, this I, when we're done with this method, is actually going to be pointing to the space immediately following the number, which should either be a space or another operator like a multiplication or a division or something else, which we'll talk about a little bit later. So what I want to do is I want to see if we can handle numbers. So let's go ahead and say handle number uh, starting at zero just to see if we can get this. And so what we'll do is we will see out uh, num.pop just to see if this works. Let's save this. Let's compile this. Oops, what happened? Oh, why am I saying val? It should be value. Silly me. Doesn't take care of things though. That says invalid initialization of non-const reference type int from our value of type int. So what I need to do is I actually need to say int i gets zero and then pass i. So I'm actually passing a value rather than a number. And actually this is probably something that we would need to take care of uh, up here. So we'll say int index. Now we'll go ahead and just say here, let's let, uh, let's let index be zero and then we'll do handle number at index. So this should work now. So let's see, let's compile. Nope, let's compile. And so we're just getting the warning up here uh, because null is going to be an issue when we try to pop an empty stack. Uh, I said we would fix that in the last episode and we'll do that in just a few minutes. Let's just run this to see if it works. So if I do 578, notice that it prints 578 because we have the C out in our handle in our input string and then it prints out 578 as the number here. If I were to run this again and do like one, two, three, four, space, five, six, seven, space, eight, nine, zero, all it's going to do is it's going to process just the first number because it stops at this space. So we know that our handle number is working. So let's get rid of the C out here because we know that works. And we'll also get rid of this C out here because we know that works. And then I did mention that we were going to fix our stacks. So let's jump back here. Um, in order to fix our stack, because we're returning null, we really don't want t, we want a pointer to t. But I don't want to fix that yet. I actually want to keep that for now. So we're just going to have the warning for now, and that's fine. All right, so what we've done is we've made it so that we can input a string. We've also made it where we can process digits. And so what we need to do is to make sure that we get all the digits here. So we don't want to actually just handle number input, what we actually want to do is figure out while the um, while input well, actually, excuse me, the second thing we need to do is we need to figure out what the size of this uh, string is. So we're going to have to create a method that's going to determine the string size. So we're going to say int get size and this is going to calculate the size of the string. So we're going to start off with an int num gets zero and while uh, input sub num is not equal to a null, then we want to num plus plus and then just return num. Keep in mind that in C++ we deal with null terminated strings. So when we type in stuff, uh, the compiler will automatically put a null at the end of that string. We're figuring out how long that is, and so we're going to be able to say uh, size, int size, gets uh, get size. And so let's go ahead and test this out real quick. So we're going to go ahead and compile and run. So if I do one, two, three, four, then it tells me that the size of my string is four. If I were to run it again, this is a test string. 
then we know that this is 21 characters long. So size tells us the length of our string. So what we need to do with this is we need to go through here and put stuff on the stacks. Um, the handle number is going to automatically put stuff on the stack. So what we need to do is if it's not a number, then we need to put it on the appropriate stack. So let's go ahead and uh, do that real quick. I know size works, so we're going to get rid of this line of code. So what we're going to do is we're going to say while index is less than size. Now we're going to do the following. We're actually going to look at the um, the first element of this. So we are going to case, uh, excuse me, switch on index, I mean on, uh, on input sub index. And we're going to look at this under several situations. If what we're talking about is a space, then what we want to do is we want to ignore this. So we're just going to do continue. Uh, and that's just going to move on to the to the next idea here. And then what we'll do down here is we'll say index plus plus, which will move to the next um, element. If we have an open parentheses, then open parentheses really has the lowest precedence of anything. Even if I hit a plus sign, I have to resolve the plus sign before I can do this open parentheses. So what I want to do is I want to push this on the operator stack. So we're going to say op.push and we're going to push in that uh, input sub index and then break. Now in the case of a plus or a minus because these both have the same precedent we're going to have to write some method later on that uh, handle plus minus. And we'll figure out what that's going to be later, but we definitely should kind of just put something up here. So we're going to write something void handle plus minus and just put empty code up there. And I probably should do the same thing for handle times divide and another one for handle right parents. So I have got these methods up here that we will write later. Uh, for now though, I'm just handling the logic of this. So we're gonna handle the plus minus and break. Uh, we're going to, in the case of a multiplication and division, we're going to handle times divide and break and in the case of the right parents we're going to handle right parents and break and if it's anything else then we're going to pretend that it is a number so we're going to jump on handle number with our index and that will just take care of the number and then we'll do our index plus plus down here to move to the next operator and this will be the logic that kind of takes us through the entire statement so what i want to do is i want to run through this um, you know handle plus minus handle times divide isn't going to do anything but what i want to do is i want to see out uh, op dot peak and num.peak just to see what's going to happen here. So we're going to save this, and we're going to compile this, and we're getting the warnings for the nulls again, and that's okay. I'm going to run this if I do 1, 2, 3, uh, plus 4, 5, 6, minus 7, 8, 9, times 10, 11, 12, and uh, 13 then we actually end up in an infinite loop because we're not doing anything in handle plus minus, handle times divide, handle right parents. So this actually gets us into an infinite loop. 
So what I want to do next time is I want to talk a little bit about these methods here, how we actually go about handling plus minus, how we handle times divide, and how we handle the right parentheses, because we could have parenthetical notions. We could have parentheses here that we're going to have to take care of. So once again, this is Mr. Potter. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.